This is Tim from Highgraph, and in this video I'm going to show you a little bit of magic about Content Federation. Because let's say you have a Dev.2 blog, and that's the source of truth for your blog, because you love that platform, you get all your community there, but you also want to show your blog posts on your website. Well, what you would traditionally do is actually implement the API in the front-end code of that website to talk to Dev.2, get the stuff, work on it. But if you have HiGraph as your CMS already, you can just connect the Dev.2 API into HiGraph and then query HiGraph with GraphQL, with strongly typed code gen, all the cool stuff that you get with GraphQL. So in this video, I'll show you how to do that. Let's go. We're in HiGraph here. And so what we need to do to get all this article stuff from Dev.2 is add a remote source in our schema. All right, let's go here and add a remote source. So we use a proxy API internally as DevRels um, for these types of demos. And so that's we, we like to call this the Federate This API. So let's add that in, correctly spelled, obviously. And so we are using REST here. You can also add GraphQL to HighGraph, by the way, but um, for now it's REST. And so um, the base URL of that API that we are using right now to fetch our Dev.2 articles is this one. Um, obviously, if you have to authenticate or do some sort of things with, with headers, you can add these here. Currently, we don't need these, so I'm not going to add them now. So then the last step of what we need is actually use something we like to call custom type definitions. And this means that whatever comes out of this REST API, we need to type it strongly so GraphQL can make a proper schema out of that. And so we use the language called SDL, which helps you type a language in GraphQL. And here in our little um, documentation of our Federate This API, I can actually grab the article, the user, and the article list as types for Dev.2. And so now that this is added, um, let's have a look and see how this works. So to be able to query this, there's two ways. So the first one is we add a global instance of this source, so you can query it from anywhere in your code. That's what we can do with a global query model. What we can also do, and that's the second one, we'll do that after, is actually be able to query it from content editing in the CMS. And that's also a really interesting use case. So let's go first with the global one. We can actually add a REST field here. And so these are articles. Oh. And the interesting bit here is that, of course, we need to figure out that we want articles from me or from my colleague Brian, for example, or from Lo. And so we need to be able to actually set something up. So first and foremost, federate this API, then we need to get the articles list, and then we need to actually set an argument for which user we want these articles from. So we can add a string here and say, username. And that username can now be inputted into GraphQL to do the query. And so what we can do here now is the dev.2 slash articles, yeah, slash, and then arguments username. So when you look at the URL below here, you can see it's the base URL we just added into here. Then we go to dev.2, then the articles, and then the username. And this is what will come out of the API for you to use. All right, let's add this and actually have a look in our API playground. So here's the playground and there's no queries here. Let's clear that up. Okay, no query. Okay, here we have articles and then we can say for username. And what do we want to see here? Oh, it's already coming up here. Do you see that? So let's go for, oh, for the slug, social image and the title and the, yeah, that is enough just for now. So what you can see here now is that I'm getting back my slug, my social image, my title, all the stuff from Dev.2 is now actually just one query away from HiGraph and this is cached and it's super fast. So now let's go to the next one where I can actually add this as a content editor. So content editors can select the latest few blog posts on just the homepage, for example. So let's go back to the schema and then here in my page schema, what we can do is actually make a new text for username. So we have to be able to get something for that specific username, right? So we just have to make a field here. And then what we also have to add, of course, is that rest field that we just did also on the global query. 
And then this one is articles. And again, federate this, we want to get articles. However, this time we're not going to add an input argument here because this is a GraphQL input. We actually need that input that we just wrote down, that username field, right? So we go to dev2 articles and then we actually get doc here and doc has username. And so this doc references this document that we're editing right now. So this is this lovely integration where you can essentially just add this field to any schema and then use the metadata from that same document to query it. And what we can do to make this a little bit easier for content editors, we can actually go to advanced and say field visibility is API only, which means that content editors don't need to see this article's remote list because there's nothing to edit in there. It's just it has to exist on it. So as you see, it's faded out here. So let's make a page. And then we query that in the API playground as well. Uh, we Oh, we actually have a page already. We just added a page, how about that? So of course, we, our username needs to be Tim Bennett. You can see that rest field is now not seen by the content editor. It just, of course, when you put some proper text here that says, hey, this is the username for your dev.2 articles, blah, blah, blah. And then imagine you have a bit more of a mature API integration. You can say, I want the latest standard or the most possible popular, something like that. You can really craft that API response. So let's hit save and publish and have a look in the API playground for all pages. So rather than this one, we go to pages and for the page we want our OG description, our OG title and our slug. That's just page related stuff, right? And then here you can see, where is it? Articles, data. And for the article, I just want um, what did we have? The social image and the title, and maybe this time the proper URL as well. And now let's hit play. So now we have our homepage, the one we just made with um, you know, the OG description, title, all the things. And then here are actually my articles. And you can have a look at that image, there it comes. And so now these articles are connected to the query for my homepage. And you can do this to the max. You can do many different approaches here. And um, this is a very interesting way of adding federated data into high graph to make it strongly typed and then you can just query high graph and you don't need to care about these other systems anymore which means they do stay flexible they can do their own updates if you have a big team of people they can actually work on these sources to enrich them and then they just go into high graph and then you have one way to query them in a very simple way and you even get an api playground to figure out how to query them anyways that's what i wanted to show you today cheers happy coding